IBC totes for firewood. This subject has been beat to death on YouTube. There are hundreds, if not thousands of videos on YouTube on how to use IBC totes for storing and transporting firewood. And most of them are all pretty much the same. You know, how to cut them out, how to load them, how to dump them in your dump trailer. Uh, and that is something that I've been trying to perfect, as a matter of fact. I did a video the other day talking about getting a set of rotating forks. Because the way I currently do it, you've got to lift them up real high, strap them to the forks on the skid loader, and kind of shake them out, okay? Works okay, but not great, because you're climbing in and out of the skid loader, hooking up the straps, you're kind of banging things around. It's hard on the IBC totes. Now I'm starting to see guys what they're doing. They'll go up to the back of a dump trailer and uh, set it on the dump trailer, lift the back up and dump it out. I've, I've seen that before. Uh, that works for one basket. Once you're trying to put two or three in the trailer, it's gonna get kind of wonky because you already have wood in there and you're dumping the second one on top of it. It's gonna roll one side to the other. It's just not a good way to do it in my opinion. Now, when I published that video the other day, I was reading through all the comments and there were some really good ideas and some that weren't so good. Many people said I should just forget about the IBC totes altogether and load right out of the wood bunker with the firewood bucket. Yes, that would be easier, I agree. It would also be easier if you didn't brush your teeth or shower each day and that's a bad idea as well. This firewood bunker is just a place to keep the wood out of the dirt. You run your conveyors in here, you get a big pile of wood in here, and then we stack it in the IBC totes. And there's a couple reasons we do that. Number one, it keeps all your firewood out of the mud, it keeps it nice and clean. That's one of the reasons we use the wood bunker. Another thing is, when this is completely filled up, we work out of this all the time, it probably only holds about 15, maybe 17 full cords. And we just use this to kind of work out of, you know? You stack the wood in the wood baskets, you move them out of the way, put some more wood in here and keep going that direction. But the biggest reason that I don't want to just load out of here is we sell seasoned firewood. And let's say I just filled this all the way up, 16, 17 cords of wood. It's not enough for what we sell. Even if I try flipping it once in a while with a firewood bucket, it's my opinion there is no way that wood in the center of the pile and down is ever going to get dry. It's just not going to happen. A lot of people try to convince themselves it'll dry just fine at the bottom of the pile. Same way they try to convince themselves they made a good choice for president in the last election. It doesn't always work out. So like I said, the wood bunker, it's here just to run wood from the conveyor into. Keeps the wood nice and clean and we can work out of this filling the IBC totes. It works really well. Everybody has different needs. This system right here seems to work pretty good for us. However, with that being said, I still need to find a great way to dump these IBC totes into the dump trailer or future dump truck that I'm gonna be getting. Now, I was pretty well set on buying a set of rotating forks. So you could just pick it up with the forks, get it up high enough, rotate the forks, and it would dump it right into the dump trailer or a dump truck. I was pretty set on doing that until I read one comment. And this comment came from a guy in Medina, Ohio. That's a uh, couple hours west of here. And I read that and I thought to myself, why didn't I think of that? So let me show you what he's talking about. First up, we're gonna move some of these IBC totes out of the way, then I'll bring a new basket over here and show you how we're gonna modify it. Uh, another thing I like about using the IBC totes, it's a great way to inventory your firewood. I know that the bigger baskets hold a little bit over a third of a cord of wood, smaller baskets right at a third of a cord. That's if the wood is stacked in there. A lot of people say just dump it in. Yes, it'd be quicker, it would be easier. However, you're not gonna fit as much wood in there, not even close compared to stacking it in there. So I'm just trying to best utilize the baskets and uh, it just seems to be the way I like to do it. All right, we have a new IBC tote right here. And by the way, that stands for Intermediate Bulk Container. I think that's what it is. But anyway, as you can tell, the tank has been removed. Now, normally when we prep these for firewood, we'll cut it like here, 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 here. You get the idea. So you can reach in and stack the firewood. You don't want to cut the entire front out of it. 
because the basket will kind of lose its integrity. It'll want to spring on the sides. So you've got to keep something kind of holding it together. Now this guy from Medina, Ohio, he said over that way, what they do, they cut the whole bottom out and just leave the top. And I got to thinking to myself, I think that'll work because if you keep that top rail, uh, it's gonna help with the integrity of the basket. It may get a little bit in the way loading the basket. We're gonna find out here in a minute, but it should dump very easily if we do it that way. Now the next thing would be, you know, to find a good way to secure the basket to the forks instead of getting out of the machine and strapping it. And I think we have a way to do that as well. As you know, these cut pretty easily with a grinder or sawzall. I prefer the sawzall. Right, we cut the entire front of the basket out just leaving this top rail right here to keep the sides from springing now we're gonna stack it full of firewood and then we'll dump it out as a test I hate doing that because I'm just gonna have to do it again or Levi will all right so far it's not bad stacking it in here when you start off you do have to kind of duck underneath this but once you get it up a foot or so you can reach in from up here all right we got her all filled up with firewood not my best stacking job just because we're going to dump it out i'm going to bring the skid loader over we'll pick it up and we will dump it and see how well it dumps compared to how i normally do it All right, first test, although it wasn't pretty, I think it was hugely successful. Compare that to this. Now, you may have noticed I did not have a strap on this basket. What I did have was this. This needs uh, perfected a little bit. I need to have two of them on here. What's nice about this, I'll use a couple little pieces of chain on either side of the forks. As you can tell right here, having one on here bent it just a little bit and it was also sliding off. It wasn't gonna fall or anything, but I think if I put a chain on each side that I can just lean out of the seat, I can hook them up and unhook them. Instead of having to get out, take the strap off, grab another basket, get out, put the strap back on, and keep repeating that process. But I think we're onto something here. Just have to find a little bit better way to secure it to the forks that I can do from inside the cab. Several people, in the comments the other day mentioned a chain uh, I'll probably do something like these with a little section of chain on each side and uh, I think that'll work good much much better than before 
Like I said, it wasn't pretty, but imagine how many rockets uh, Elon Musk blew up before he got one into space. Did you see that one the other day? The rocket booster. I think they may have hit the self-destruct button. I don't know. But it did the separation like it was supposed to. And there was just this massive explosion. And the lady on camera talking about it, she never missed a beat. She said, as you can see, we had a rapid, what did she call it? Unplanned rapid disassembly. I guess that's what you call it when they just blow up. So I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there are hundreds, if not thousands of videos on YouTube on IBC totes. And it got me thinking, we're gonna go up to the house. Well, we'll go over to the building, get the laptop out. And we're gonna try to figure out how many and when the first one was published. I'm sure one of mine was probably one of the early ones, probably four years ago, I think. We'll have to see. All right, we're up here in the game room in the building, and it feels fabulous in here with the wood stove. It's cold out. I mean, it's saying it's 30 degrees right now, but it's windy, and down at the cabin, it's 24 degrees there right now, and really windy down there. They got a little dusting of snow, I'm gonna see what happens tomorrow, but uh, maybe the following day, I'll go down there and do a little hunting. Just kind of hiking around a little bit in the snow would be nice. But anyway, I'm sitting here on the computer and I mentioned earlier that there are hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube about IBC totes, okay? We're gonna try to find out how many there are or maybe when the first one was. Mine's pretty early, I bet you. I've been doing this a lot of years. So we're gonna search for IBC totes for firewood. All right, we searched for IBC totes for firewood. Then I came over here to filter and I put upload date. So it's gonna be newest to oldest. There was actually one 11 hours ago. And then you can just start scrolling. Here's one nine days ago, 12 days ago. These are all videos about IBC totes. Like I said, this has been beat to death, and I have not seen one where anybody cuts them out the bottom like that for dumping in a trailer. I think we're on to something there. Yeah, man, there's a lot of videos. What, what did we go through, 50 so far? I don't even know. We're just going to keep scrolling. Man, it's so nice over here and warm. I tell Melissa I'm busy over here. She'll find me taking a little nap of Rooney on the couch. Like, we're going to speed this up. There's hundreds of IBC tote videos. I know mine have to be towards the beginning. I don't know who showed me or who told me about IBC totes from the start. I can't remember. I think it's one of ours. Yeah, stocking up on more IBC totes. This is me up at my buddy Adam Fisher's place. That was just a year ago. We're only a year into this. Got to go back at least four years. We got to speed this up here. I'm just passing them up. They're not even coming up. Still going. We're back to two years now. Yeah, a lot of channels... I think when they get, you know, just getting started, everyone has to start, you know, at the bottom. But a lot of times what they'll do is just go to another channel, a bigger one, and see what videos did well. Here's uh, five years ago, my little firewood operation, one of our videos. There's Melissa and Piper. That's it. Video number 244, I think. I don't know. I searched for IBC totes for firewood, and it looks like our video, number 244, was the first one on YouTube. Huh. Boy, look how different things were then. Click on some of these videos here. So welcome back, everyone. I used to clap my hands. You see that? And we used to have a jeep in the goby color I used to have a black f-150 i like that color of jeep by the way it's melissa helping me lift it off 
And then I was just showing how you tear them apart and cut them apart. That was the first one. I'll be darned. But boy, things looked a lot different. I want to find one from down the wood yard. Here, we're heading down there now. Yeah, here we go. This was about the extent of the wood yard right here. Let's go to that other video. Maybe we have a different view. This one. His phone number. Yeah, that was pretty much the whole wood operation right there. It looks a lot different today. There, see that? The pavilion sits right in here. That maple tree that's beside the pavilion, it's right over here. Yeah, a lot has changed in five years, that's for sure. Let's see what else we got here. This video here actually weighed how much an IBC tote, you know, full of wood was. Here's another one down at the wood yard in its infancy. Trying to get one with a view of the low side. There was nothing down there, which is why I didn't have anything. Huh. Yeah. So there you have it. The next one after our one, two, three, four was the ultimate firewood storage solution. And that was by Lanning Long Arm Mowing. Wow. Kind of taking a stroll down memory lane here. Sawing with Sandy. 2,000 views three years ago. And then everyone started getting on to it. Tons and tons and tons of IBC tote videos. All the way up until... Eleven hours ago. So yeah, that's the story on the IBC totes. But the guy that made that comment, I gotta find his name, Joe Gentile. He said, "Mike, buy me in Medina. I don't know if it's Medina or Medina. I call it Medina. In Medina, Ohio, they cut opening in the totes reversed. They cut from the bottom up and leave the cage attached at the top. When they go to dump the tote, it falls out of the bottom as they shake it out. I didn't even have to shake that out. That worked pretty good. All I have to do is perfect the chain system on both sides where I can just open the door of the skid loader, reach out, and hook them and unhook them. That's going to be the ticket. So basically, Joe saved me about $8,000 is how much a set of those rotating forks cost. So I appreciate that. But yeah, you get some good ideas in the comments and some that aren't so good. It's just the way it is. But I want to tell you something. I mentioned the other day, myself and Melissa, we both had a cold. My voice is straightened out. I'm feeling totally fine. Uh, still a little bit of a cough. But Hunter, I told you the other day, he's bulletproof. He doesn't, doesn't get sick very often at all. Very, very seldom. But when he does, he has a completely different approach to it than any of us. He literally just goes to sleep and it gets concerning and you can't enjoy it that he's not running around and you got to keep your eye on him all the times. But like yesterday, he slept on and off from 11 o'clock in the morning till about five that evening. He would sleep for maybe an hour and a half, get up for just a few minutes. He wouldn't eat anything. Uh, I just kept giving him some water on occasion. He didn't even want a pop, didn't even want a can of soda, which is totally unlike him. And then last night he slept from 6.30 till 6.30 this morning and went back to bed about 7 till 8. And then he got up and he was 100%. He, he was just ready to get back at it, ready to eat again, ready to do the laundry, ready to tell us what to do. And he was just back to himself like that. But he does that, and I don't know why. It's probably a pretty good system. We all just probably need rest when we're not feeling good, and none of us do. 
But uh, yeah, so for about 24 hours, less than that, he just slept and he's right back at it. But he's good now. So I think that's about it for today's video. Like I said, later this week, might try to make it down to uh, West Virginia. We'll see. New grandson is doing fantastic. He made his first trip to the doctor today. All is good there. And uh, I think that's about it. But I appreciate y'all being here, and I will catch you on the next one.